It's said everyone has a story. China has almost 1.4 billion of them. From the mega cities to the vast countryside, from the ancient to the ultra-modern, it's our job to bring these stories to you, direct from one of the most rapidly changing nations on the planet. An international freight railway network is connecting China to cities across Europe. It's been dubbed the New Silk Railroad. 2,000 years ago, commodities could take a year to get from China to Europe along the ancient trade road. But today, consumer goods can reach London by rail in just 14 days. I'm Sam Willis, a historian. I've been exploring the ancient silk trading routes by land and sea. Well, there would have been hundreds of people, if not thousands, in canoes, in big trading junks. And I'm teaming up with CGTN journalist Li Chou Yuan. China Railway Express sent out its first London. Death she has been reporting on the Silk Railroad since it began, five years ago. The country actually imported agricultural products worth more than 110 billion US dollars in 2016 alone. Together, we are visiting two key stops on this railway network in China. Yiwu in the east and Chengdu in the southwest. Now someone in Europe can just wish something and here it is in China. To find out how this new connection mirrors the ancient Silk Road and how consumer demands are driving a new era of east-west trade. Iwu, Eastern China, a trading hub. For three decades, it took goods from here bound for Europe two hours by road just to reach the nearest seaport, followed by a two-month journey across the oceans. But today, a new freight rail link connects Iwu to Europe along an ancient trading route, and it's transforming trade. In 2017, Iwu exported 37 billion US dollars worth of goods. To unravel this city's story, I'm meeting a journalist who has been working in China for the past seven years, Li Chouyuan. It's home of the world's largest wholesale market of small consumer goods, selling everything from textiles, toys, artificial flowers. So there's a great demand for fast, reliable, and cost-effective way of transporting merchandise. So the railway gives them another option. Well, I've been reading about its history and heritage, and I'm keen to start exploring. Nearly 300 kilometers from Shanghai stands Iwu Railway Station, a massive freight terminus that began transporting cargo overland to Europe in 2014. It's part of the multi-billion dollar One Belt, One Road plan to boost international trade. A train from Madrid is arriving with 48 carriages carrying a total cargo of 1.1 million kilograms of goods. Each container must be unloaded and cleared through customs. Team leader Wu Xiaodong is coordinating, and I want to know how these products cross international borders. What's in all these containers? They're do you know what? I'd love to have a closer look. You know, this is a kind of technology I absolutely love. You've got some boxes, you've got some wheels, and you've got some track. But with a bit of imagination, you can change the world. The Iwu Madrid Railway is the longest rail link in the entire world. It extends for 13,000 kilometers through France, Germany, Poland, Belarus, 
Russia and Kazakhstan. But not all countries on the route use the same rail technology and transfers are required. I want to find out how they manage this feat. So one minute for one swap, that's quite efficient. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Such efficiency helps the rail link cut Europe-China transportation time by half. Goods now take only three weeks to arrive, compared to six weeks by sea. This means people are getting their products faster. A fresh batch of imports has just arrived. Customs officer Wang Sen and his team have to clear the goods before they can be sent out. From Czech Republic. What other types of goods do you keep here? 有来自这个西班牙的红酒，那还有一些有沿线其他国家的一些这个橄榄油、果汁、啤酒这些商品。我带你去看一下吧。这边。There must be thousands of cans here. Can you get a sense of which goods are popular from those that arrive and then pass through very quickly? 呃，我们这边进口的话都是季节性比较强的，像夏天的话就是啤酒、饮料、果汁进口比较多，那么天气冷的时候就是红酒进口多一点。New cargo from Europe is arriving in Iwu every week, supplying a steady flow of seasonal imports. You know, just a few decades ago, foreign products weren't as readily available. There were few selections and they were pretty expensive. But now cities like Iwu are importing products regularly that can be afforded by locals all the way from Europe. That's quite a change. Yeah, and it's interesting if you compare it to how the Silk Road used to work. So 2,000 years ago, they did trade in perishables, but those were the very long shelf life, so herbs, spices and tea. But it was incredibly expensive and only a few people could actually afford it. But this stuff is accessible to so many more thousands of people. Now that foreign products are more accessible and affordable, local tastes are changing. And there's no better time to sell these goods than China's annual spring festival. Choi Wen and I are heading to a Lunar New Year food fair to find out how foreign foods are transforming a traditional Chinese holiday. This is all from Bulgaria. Mm. Yeah, it's delicious. It's a Bulgarian hazelnut chocolate wafer, and it's amazing. I'd import this if I was Chinese. <laughs> Food fairs are everywhere during the new year, but this one in particular sells mostly European products. Five bucks a bag. It's from France. It's interesting to see so many European items on display. I mean, the Chinese clearly want to have European goods for their Lunar New Year parties. China now has a burgeoning middle class. They have growing passion for foreign food. They have great buying powers. You know, in 2016 alone, the country has actually imported agricultural products worth more than 110 billion U.S. dollars. Can you believe it? billion. That is extraordinary, isn't it? With Chinese disposable income increasing significantly over the past decade, there's a growing desire for a better life. And the place they are starting at? Food and drink. Jin Hai Jin is one of Iwu's biggest wine importers. In 2017 alone, close to a billion bottles of wine were imported. Today, China is the fourth largest importer of wine and is expected to surpass huge markets like Britain and France within the next two years. I want to know how Chinese tastes are changing. Cheers. 
Is this the type of wine that the Chinese particularly like? I think the strength of the wine is a byproduct of the taste. I think they want a very powerful wine that kind of smacks them around the head with Spain rather than something subtle and light. I mean, that, it is, it's an extraordinarily powerful statement. Mm -hmm. The emergence of European produce in the market is a reflection of the changing demands of China's growing middle class. The rail link increases their accessibility and Iwu is their gateway to the country. Now I want to understand more about this landlocked city and how it earned its status as a trading hub. The story begins 300 years ago. A mammoth new freight rail link between Europe and China has sparked a new era of trade for the eastern Chinese city of Iwu. I've traveled to Fotang, an ancient town 10 kilometers from Iwu's center with journalist Li Chouyuan to learn more about its trading heritage. It's all to do with this river. This is the Chentang River system that goes all the way to Hangzhou, 150 kilometers to the north. That river system is also connected to the Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal system. So goods could get from here to Beijing. I'm meeting local historian Chen Yunchuan to learn what this place was like at the peak of its trading past. What was Fortang like? Fortang Fortung was once a hive of activity, so busy that it had nine ports. Local produce like brown sugar, dates and ham was exported to the rest of China. But one commodity gained the most attention, salt. As water routes have been replaced, this riverside port has had to find itself a new competitive edge. You know, that's what a lot of young people do here in China. They choose to have a traditional style of wedding. All the traditional Chinese dresses is getting trendy now. Fortung has found a way to preserve its trading heritage, making and selling traditional wedding items. This is a this happiness couplet represents prosperity and is given to the groom's family during the betrothal ceremony. You know, the history of Chinese wedding goes way back, and then people still practice certain rituals today. Why don't you give it a try? It looks like a job for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> 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 Right. You pay attention, you might learn something. It takes about an hour for her to do this, the complete really? one piece, yeah. Oh my God. It's going to take you a day. You took me a week. <laughs> a week. <laughs> it's lovely to see with, with such a big thing as the trade city, you know, just down the road, that there's still a market for 
nostalgia at least. Everything is just so fast paced now and there's a wave of nostalgia slowly bubbling to the surface in this culture. I'm not surprised. I think with everything moving forward so quickly, it's like they need to sort of anchor themselves in the past. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. In the past, trade centres arose and specialised in a kind of organic way. So if you think about Jingde Zhen, the capital of Chinese porcelain, that was there because the right type of clay was nearby and also the right type of forests, pine forests, which they used to fire the kilns. But today, it seems so much more of a choice. Yeah, you do see a certain pattern today. For example, Hangzhou is known for e-commerce and Guangzhou is going for manufacturing businesses. And you, where we are, is known for trading small consumer goods. Overcoming odds to earn its status as one of the richest cities in China, Iwu exported an estimated 33 billion US dollars of small consumer goods in 2017 alone. And there's one product the city exports that's universal, supplying 3 billion pairs to the entire world every year. Cho Yuan and I have come to Iwu in eastern China in search of goods destined for Europe along its new rail network. Socks. Almost a third of the world's supply comes from Zhejiang province and Iwu is home to some of the largest sock manufacturers. I want to find out how it supplies the world. This is one of our most recent it's unlike any sock I've ever seen. Hong Li Li runs one of Iwu's largest sock production lines, supplying to major fashion companies and supermarkets globally. <laughs> it's an utterly fantastical machine. It's got pipes, it's whirring, there's a sort of bellows breathing out the back. And then all of a sudden the sock appears out of here. It's like it's been invented by a mad scientist. Lili needs to export at least 40 containers every month to meet demands. Traditional shipping lines were once the only mode of export. But now Lili's factory is making a switch due to the increased speed of rail transport. 那麼現在呢,義烏有了義興歐,那麼有了火車班列,這個真的很棒,因為它不僅從時效性,而且準時力都提高了很多,可以做快速反應。Socks are just one of the many exports originating from this small inland city. The majority of the world's low-cost consumables come from here, Iwu's international trade city. A sprawling complex the size of 800 football fields with some 62,000 shops and nearly half a million different products to choose from. It is the world's largest wholesale market. This trade city attracts more than 200,000 people a day. You know, there have been various ways of explaining how big this place is and one of them is brilliant. Someone estimated that if you spend three minutes inside every shop, it would take you a year and a half to walk around it. This is where any imaginable knick-knack in the world can be found. A place synonymous with the phrase, made in China. I want to find out how trading here works. What do you usually do when you're here? I come here looking for products for my customers. Uh, they might send through a picture or an inquiry on, through the internet and I'll go and find it. Or they sometimes come here and I accompany them around the market to the different where the categories they want to look at. What are you looking for today? Today we're going to check on some felt pieces for a teaching resource company. Armed with 17 years of experience, English trader Nigel Crop is going to show us how a deal is done. So what is the biggest advantage of sourcing products here? I think the biggest advantage you have so many different product categories here under one roof. It's like a one-stop shop. Mm. Very convenient. And then we try negotiate a better price if we can. Can you show us how you do that? 
Sure, we'll have a go. <laughs> Good luck. You got a nangua, two sachi. Nangua, Yamau. Yamau, Yamanga. Can we chuck a piano? Yamanga, my chicken is a piano. If in China, I'm not silly. They must drink dinner. They must. Oh, come on. They must. Pushing that. They must. Pushing. Hundreds of deals like this are struck every minute here. The goods will be checked by suppliers, and once they pass quality control, they will be loaded into containers and transported across 13,000 kilometers overland to Europe, beginning their great cross-Eurasia journey, taking 16 days. With new rail routes being established, trade across the Eurasian continents from China to Europe is representing a new era of connectivity. You know, it's hard to believe that Iwu started off as a small hub for trading salt and it's transformed itself into this enormous wholesale market for small goods. Well, Iwu has certainly done a great job keeping up with the times and now seeing some of the products that cannot be afforded by Chinese middle class now coming through that rail line just gives you a snapshot of what Iwu has made possible today. And I think that's really the story we see in the history of the Silk Road. Those cities that can adapt, that can evolve, those are the ones that survive and the ones that can't, well, they're forgotten. As the train pulls out of Iwu's railway station, Shou Yuan and I prepare to head west to Chengdu, a mountainous trading post 2,000 years ago and the heart of the ancient Silk Road to discover how this city is now home to the busiest railway station in China. Chalwale, 那年纪车吧比整体机车大大的改变了结果没想到到了
。如果吃辣椒吃多了，不香，上厕所去，就会影响全线列车班列，不能有那个万一。原来的时候比这车，车也少，人还多。那时候一票难求，买张票往往得找关系，上哪去时间非常长。现在随着中国高速铁路往全面建成，列车密集度非常高。原来到南京跑十个小时，现在用两小时十分钟。现在是三十一年，对于霍尔斯基这一点，最重要的就是安全。你这样说，嗯，是安全。我们也二十多年老夫老妻了，早的时候是，哎，注意安全点如果没回来，他心里就感觉不踏实。只要我出城来，我坐到司机驾驶座上，我把一切全都忘掉。我的想法就是，我怎么把这一趟车安全的运行到地方？我身后。有一千多名旅客，他们的家人也在惦记着他们的安全。我最大的心愿就是开一趟车安全一趟车，开一辈子车安全一辈子。